Okay, I am going to walk you through how to design an electrical schematic for a dumb pump and a smart pump in this real world project for a school BMS project. So let's get into it. Cool, so as you can see, we are starting off here with the um, main isolator out in the field. As you can see, we're already starting to build up this project. Um, those two things that you can see out in the field. So just so you're aware, that dividing line on the schematic here, that thick dividing line, is for everything Below that is outside of the panel. Everything inside that is inside the panel. So you can see that we've already started doing the designs for the two boilers in this project. So yeah, now we've got a two pole isolator out in the field with, as you can see there, a motor connected to it. You can see that we're gonna just copy this from a previous design and move that over. Uh, the the earth point cool so that's a, that's the first bit our motors out in the field via two pole isolator with an earth connection now what we're going to do as you can see is we're going to add terminals inside the panel so this is obviously where our internal wiring of the panel meets our external wiring out in the field of this pump so those squares were the terminal blocks now for anyone that's unfamiliar with what this is here the C question mark and the OL question mark is contactor and overload so this is we're using a contactor and overload now for the control of what you'll see are our dumb pumps. These are what I class as dumb pumps. There's no intelligent electronics built into the pump. So we're just going to use pretty bog standard old school control, i.e., as I've just mentioned, using a contactor and overload configuration. Okay, we can skip through that. And yeah, these are, as you saw with the motor, there's only two cables coming from the motor to that main isolator. So it's a two, two pole single phase. You know, it's just a live and a neutral. And we're putting, although we're using a three, a three phase contactor, because most of them come in three phase, we're just gonna wire it in a way that we're, we're I think the way that I've got this wiring configuration is the live is coming in the contactor out of the overload we'll see in a second and then back in to the second pole of the contactor and overload um, yeah so we're putting the, the full load through that overload relay so it works correctly so now we're, we've just connected the, the neutral that just goes straight through the contactor and overload, which is fine. And now we're just putting in that, ah, there you can see, I'm going into <clears throat> the second pole of the contactor with the live. And we're obviously going through an MCB here as well, which is what I'm doing here, just making sure that we add that MCB in. And then, so yeah, it goes into the second pole of the contactor, out of the second pole of the overload, and then back around into the first pole, and out of the of the first pole of the contactor, and out of the first pole of the overload, then into the motor. And for me, I just like doing, once you've got, once you've done a few schematics, as you can see, I just keep like a library of previous blocks, previous components, and I just like copy and pasting. Why bother drawing things if you've already, if you already created it? And the same with like the, the line connections that you just saw there, I just copy and paste it. <laughs> uh, 
same thing with all the annotations and the sizing of the um, the wording and the letters just and the yeah the spacing I'll just keep it all the same I just like that consistency throughout the whole drawing throughout the whole schematic and yeah I try and use all the same reference points what I'm doing here for that for that spacing just so it looks so much nicer on the eye you know when people are reading through the you know people in the field reading through your schematics it's so much easier for them to understand and visually when things are spaced out nicely so yeah that was the the first dumb pump and now what you can see is when I wasn't recording I've just duplicated exactly the same thing for the second pump so these are the the, the dumb boiler pumps um, boiler pump one and boiler pump two now what we're doing <clears throat> is we're going to be designing a smart pump and the way that I design these smart pumps you know, they're not as you can see they're not like a, a standard circular motor symbol because there's various inputs and outputs for these smart pumps you know where you have like running outputs you have fault outputs um, you might have a constant power connection and then you have a, a run enable on and off so for that I just create like a, a block like you're seeing here and then like detail all the all the connections so I think what I'm doing here is I'm just copying from yeah copying a boiler block that I've already created and I'm just going to kind of modify the terminals and the connections in line with what I'm looking at on the technical manual so I'm looking at the tech manual as I'm doing these designs to make sure that I'm getting all of the connections correctly you know so if the engineers out in the field they're looking at the same thing and hopefully there's not too much red they're not going to have to red pen my designs when they're on site because I haven't actually properly looked into you know the tech manual and how these components are being controlled and what the the specific terminals are so you can see this is what I'm doing now is just removing all the original boiler connections or most of them anyway and I'm just going to add in the new connections and how they're detailed for the for the smart pump so let's skip forward here pretty boring so as you can see we got a common and normally closed and it's difficult as a designer like generally speaking you always wire in the normally closed so like it fails fails open or when power's off it's it's it depends on the application actually so don't it, it depends but what i've done is i've worked out that this should be wired normally closed so i don't need to add in the the normally open connections now if the guys on site realize that that needs inverting then they would just red pen out that nc as you can see there normally closed and change it to no so normally open so it's difficult for designers sometimes to get that around the right way and that's where a lot of the time commissioning engineers like might need to red pen it and switch it from you know normally open to normally closed or normally closed to normally open based on what's going on on site but you can see here that they are what we're doing is it's the the run the run output on relay one and although this might change actually but you've got two relay outputs on these smart pumps um, one to tell us whether the pump is running that feeds back into the BMS or the control system uh, and one to let us know if the pump's gone into fault so yeah that c is the common and the no is the normally open and the nc is the normally closed relay connections on that pump what am i doing here yep so then adding the two pole 
isolator out in the field. Adding the terminals. I think I I made a mistake here. Um, this no, which you might not see. I, I realise this later on. That at the moment it looks like I'm putting this through a contactor. When I don't think that's how it ended up. I think it just had constant main power supply, and then the control was through the run enable signal at the bottom right, you know, where it says enable there. Um, and that's controlled through a relay. So yeah, I think what you saw there wasn't entirely correct. Um, the, it was just single phase, 230 volt AC to the pump, constant power via an MCB. So there was no contactor control. And then later on, I realized, oh, the control is done through the, the run enable. Um, via a relay um, so yeah just to clear that up I uh, hope you enjoyed the video see you later